So in the, f in the first few sentences, I'll try to say what I think has been changing about the internet in the last five years, and then uh, what has been changing about internet governance. And I think I would say two big things have changed about the internet. One is it a about its extent and scope. There are more people, many more people using the internet today, and therefore many different kinds of people internet using the internet today than they were using five to ten years back. And internet is involved in much wider range of social activity than it was involved, which is all a very good news, but that brings up a political issue. When different kind of people use internet for a variety of different kind of acts, differential interests come in. It becomes more of a political question than it was earlier when they were more or less users of a similar kind with similar interests and similar backgrounds using the internet for a, a small range of function. And, and then you, you, you are confronted with more political questions and, and this has happened. Uh, internet has changed in a manner which requires now more political issues to be addressed and a greater political governance of internet. The second thing is about the architecture of the internet. And here the news is uh, rather worse. I think, and we know it, I mean, uh, about six, seven years, internet was a network of tens and thousands of networks and increasingly it is a network of a couple of, like maybe a score of large uh, companies which largely dominate up to 90% of the internet and things are going worse. The consolidation of power on the internet is increasing. Increasingly very few companies dominate the internet and as internet is used by the people today, it involves being within the, the proprietary environment of certain applications. So issues like network neutrality, cloud computing, wireless internet is changing the internet in a manner that there's a consolidation of power and, and loss of diversity on the internet. And this, uh, this consolidation of power again needs a political response for, for the people, for the common people to, to reduce that consolidation, to democratize power on the internet. And therefore this second uh, kind of change which internet has gone through again calls for a more political response. So uh, as you see, the two big changes which I identified about the internet over these last few years, both had one, both have one thing in common which is it requires a more political response. And then we come to the question of how internet governance has changed. Has it been able to give that political response to, to, the, to, the, to the needs that have arisen. The good news first, what has changed positively about internet governance is that national governments are more aware about the kind of issues which are involved. They're able to take care of national issues in, in definitely much better way than they could do a couple of years back. At a global level as well, there's more awareness about the range of issues. People have been talking to each other, they know each other's perspectives better. But if we were to ask one direct question that has internet governance at the global level changed, improved, uh, I'm not very sure. As I said, the requirements and the needs have become manifold, they've changed manifold, but the response, the political response at the global level have more or less uh, not changed, and that, that's, that's my opinion. And whether, whether the themes uh, have evolved, they need to change. Uh, I think the themes have been good. They still serve the purpose, but to be more purposive, and that's also come out in many of the statements that we need more tangible outcomes, we need to start addressing more specific questions. Take a question, hammer it out, get something out of it. I mean, even if at the end there is a diversity of views, but we should be able to make progress on clear questions of governing social media, network neutrality, interconnection charges. Choose a couple of questions and let's try to make progress on that. Has the participation increased? It, is, it has increased in one manner. We see more developing country people here, they know more about the issues, but I'm not very sure because 
we keep on talking about the marginalized people and that, that's, that's the, you know, that moral uh, conscious keeper which governs all our discussions, but if you have to ask me the question directly, has the participation of the marginalized people increased? I, I don't see many, much signs of it. Marginalized people would have to be, would have to participate through representation, through governments, but through NGOs, through civil society groups, through community-based groups, which work with them, and their participation has to increase before we can say the participation has really increased. And on this, I think, still we have a long, long uh, way to go. And uh, yeah, IGF is increasing participation. It's increasing awareness. The next step is to channel the kind of work we have done at IGF into real global policy making.